I would like to address this two-stage retreat from the last glacial maximum. The sudden, from the Heinrich event, uh, H1, to the sudden, the sudden warming of perhaps 10 degrees C to the bowling alarod, followed by a few thousand years of slow cooling to the Younger Dryas, and then another sudden warming. So that two stage is what we're going to talk about. Remember Heinrich, Bowling Alarod, Younger Dryas, and Holocene or modern. Um, and uh, just an acknowledgment, this is joint with uh, Jean Su, Caltech graduate student, and some support. And uh, here we go. What uh, to get uh, this morning, uh, there was a session on abrupt climate change, and uh, there was a lot of talk about uh, sea ice uh, retreating fast, but I've got a, we've got a different mechanism, and it may or may not be compatible with uh, the idea of s sensitivity of sea ice in the uh, AMOC uh, retreat, uh, or shutting off and shutting on, but uh, we're just going to talk about columns of fluid today. Uh, and uh, the thermobaric effect, which uh, is a consequence of the equation of state of seawater, whereby the uh, thermal coefficient of expansion is a strongly uh, increasing function of depth. And the uh, salinity sensitivity coefficient is not. Uh, so what happens is that you can have what looks like a stable column, cold, fresh water above warm, salty water. Uh, and uh, as far as density or potential density is concerned, this is a stable interface, or you could have a stable gradient, or at least a neutral gradient, front uh, parcel of frequency equal to zero. Uh, but if you take a parcel of cold water and start moving it down, it will pick up, if you're moving it down, it will pick up negative buoyancy because the effect of its coldness starts to increase and increase and increase and so it gets denser as it goes down and it will sink like a rock and you can turn this whole column in a fairly uh, vigorous event. A small trigger, uh, like a little bit of extra cooling at the surface, can uh, easily, with realistic type of uh, salinity uh, and temperatures, generate a uh, tenth of a joule per kilogram, which is equivalent to a RMS velocity of 44 centimeters per second. And I, I'm going to tell you about a numerical model. I'm going to show you some pictures from that. It's a 2D numerical model, uh, vertical and horizontal, solve for stream function, uh, potential temperature salinity. Uh, we include the dissipative terms and the diffusive heating in the heat equation so we could conserve energy to machine round off error, 15 significant figures or whatever you choose. Um, let me show you some examples. This is cold fresh, cold fresh over warm salty. This is depth. This is a little box, four and a half kilometers wide. And, uh, oh, I need a cursor. I need to drive. Do you want to set it off or I will? There we go. I got to get this thing working. It's backwards. I, I don't know. Come on, you set the, set the movie off. I can't do it. It's too hard. Okay, so uh, you're going to see a small, infinitesimally small, no, yes, it's running. A small perturbation. Whoa. It didn't run. Yeah, but it's not actually running. This is too bad. It's not running. Um, you know, it worked in the speaker ready room. Nah. Oh, it's too bad. Um, should, should we can open the, maybe the, the movie on the, the movie, screen. if you can move, uh, I've got the file of the movie. <laughs> this is not playing. 
What's the name? What's the name of that? Uh, that's going to be. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's going to be. Doesn't. It's. Try that one. Why not? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Now the, the perturbation. You there's the perturbation, and you see the cold fresh just sinks like a rock, uh, <clears throat> and the time is very fast. Now this case, uh, which had more warm, uh, salty water than this case, it, the warm water is going to reach the surface. So that would be a climate perturbation because you've suddenly brought warm, salty water to the surface, and that could be one of these. Uh, uh, rapid climate shifts in the North Atlantic. <clears throat> um, oops. Okay, let's move on. Uh, here's just another one. Could you play that one? If you can, or you got to go. Uh, this is just a different, this is a hundred, uh, hundred meters wide. Whoops, well, this is all a hundred meters uh, no, what is it? Uh, 10 kilometers. Yeah, it's, I can't read it. 10 kilometers and it's, yeah, let's just move on here. We, we don't want to take up your time, my time, anyone's time. Okay, now a criticism of this idea of, of stored potential energy, and that's what it is, uh, which we call uh, ocean convective available potential energy, OCAPE. Um, a criticism of this idea is the ocean is too well mixed, not very well mixed, but it's sufficiently well mixed that you never get this stored potential energy that uh, can be set off by a trigger. However, uh, let me cite two counterexamples. This is from uh, CCSM3. Uh, from uh, Liu and uh, also He, uh, and this is somewhere up in the Nordic Sea, and this is an example of uh, stored potential energy with uh, cold, salty water uh, on top of warm, fresh. Uh, and GCMs don't really parameterize convection, uh, taking into account this uh, dual role of cold, fresh, and warm, salty, uh, they typically, uh, and, and I'm not the expert, uh, they typically uh, just worry about brunt visal frequency and, and density only. But in fact, there's two things going on here. Uh, next example is uh, from some colleagues of mine at Caltech. Uh, and look at this. This is during the Heinrich Stadial before the bowling hour rod, uh, and you can and these are some corals uh, in the north, uh, in growing on sea mounts and continental slopes, and you'll see it's cold uh, at this time, which was uh, 15 and a half kilo years ago, but uh, a few hundred years later it was warm, so there was a warming event, and uh, this warming event was at intermediate depth uh, above this intermediate depth, it was colder. So uh, these authors say, well, it can't be warmer unless it's also saltier. It couldn't, uh, wouldn't be stable. In addition, uh, there is a change in ventilation age simultaneous with this. So uh, this is uh, 800 years uh, older ventilation age uh, than this water. And uh, that really implies that the, a, a new water vat mass moved in. It was warmer, saltier, and had a different ventilation age. And it, uh, so you built up this thermobaric, this stored potential energy, this OCAPE. You built it up by horizontal advection. Uh, these authors uh, speculate that it was warm, salty water from the Southern Ocean. But uh, we're not really addressing that. Okay, so I now want to get you through, this is going to be another model, uh, through the uh, two-stage. So let's take the uh, 
Initial, as an initial condition, what the corals just told us, warm salty water interleaving with uh, cold fresh. And uh, there's the time scale in days. And uh, the surface has gotten warmer very quickly. And uh, so now we're, uh, we've gotten transitioned from the Heinrich Stadial to the uh, bowling Alarod. Now I have to switch, sorry about that. Um, oops, I just clicked something. Uh, I, uh, sorry about this. Just tell me when I'll move, okay. Now I've got you to this, from the Heinrich cold at the surface to warm at the surface, bowling out around. Now, 3,000 or 2,000 years are going to pass between here and here, and uh, it's going to get colder and fresher at the surface, I suppose, because this is causing the ice sheets to melt. And, uh, and it's uh, getting colder. And we're also allowing some geothermal heat. We're making this up. I'm, we don't have a GCM. All we have are these little boxes. Uh, but we're allowing some geothermal heat to warm it up. So now a little further cooling is going to set off another one of these warm events and we're going to get to the modern ocean and this is the last movie. It looks like that, uh, except I can't play it. You're going to have to play it. If you... You're guessing very well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so remember, the surface is cold. We're in the Younger Dryas. This one happened to start uh, at the bottom, but it, uh, we don't. And suddenly, the uh, surface temperature has gone up by a couple of degrees. So uh, I would suggest that uh, this is a, uh, I'll just put this up and talk to you. Uh, that this is a way to get rapid warming events uh, uh, and also saltying events uh, because you're bringing warm salty water to the surface. Um, I'm not, we, we, uh, what we have to do now is to put this in a GCM, but that's uh, not going to be easy because GCMs don't handle thermobaric instability uh, right now, as far as we can tell. Uh, we haven't done a total survey. They just look at uh, the Brunt-Weissel frequency and don't uh, distinguish, really, between what's causing density gradients. Uh, and um, we might find that this mechanism is the trigger that's causes the AMOC to change uh, or to suddenly increase uh, and sea ice to retreat. So uh, we're not saying that everyone else is wrong, we're just saying this is a mechanism for rapid climate change. And uh, I'll stop right there. Thank you very much. Uh, other questions? Okay, over there, yeah. And may, sorry, may you come to the microphone, please, so we don't mind. Thanks. Okay, yes, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I've found this work that you've done in the past also on this topic very, very stimulating. Thank you. So, so thank you for that. But I'm, not, I would, I'm just wondering about the, the statement that these processes aren't included in GCMs, because I know GCMs do include, I mean, some of the more recent ones, they do include fully nonlinear equation of state. John, uh, uh, John has looked at uh, Echo 3, I think it's, and I think he's looked at uh, the CCM 3. And it's true they have a fully nonlinear equation of state, but uh, this is a small scale process that must be parameterized. And it's in the parameterization that we don't, of convection, that we think the models are not handling. 